Hello and welcome to this week's edition of El Cat News. I'm your host, Jen Carlos. On Monday, the Town Council held a special budget working session to hear recommendations for next year's capital projects from the Town Manager's Capital Committee. The proposals include a mix of funding out of general operating revenues, bonding, and projects self-funded through the enterprise accounts. Well, uh, Jean and, and Jim and I were uh, asked to join with uh, Denise Menard and Sarah Menard to review the capital budgets for FY20. I will preface it by saying all of the requests have merit. Um, it's just that there's only a certain amount of money uh, that the town can afford. And based on those guidelines, we utilize that to do, to do a, uh, uh, a, a prioritized order uh, in which we would recommend. Uh, and the recommendations are in uh, order of funding. So the first set of recommendations and in order of which we would recommend being funded are from the general fund. Uh, so from the operating budget uh, and the next group is from the enterprise funds and then the next group is borrowing so and, and other or other sources uh, so that is generally the process and how we wound up with what you were looking at uh, this past week we, we're not required to vote on these tonight no, 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 and we need to no. reflect on some of them I do I need to, to okay, do a little bit and more that's fine we yeah. get to the end of the next presentation of, on the line item budget and then we make some decisions as well as we have a, uh, a standing subcommittee uh, standing committee for uh, financial oversight so we might even uh, refer it to that at that point for their recommendation back to the seven of us to the Sarah and Denise's committee, Jim, and Jim Walsh was not here, and Jean, thank you very much. Uh, your concerted effort and experiences uh, in the past with financials uh, has been a big plus for Sarah and Denise to help uh, sort this out and vet it and do the very best we can. So On Tuesday, the planning board read through another draft proposed bylaw for mixed-use zones. My thought is that we need to have some kind of outline that, we, that lists all the stuff that, um, that needs to be considered in, in writing a zone description for this. The bylaw would provide a basis for establishing a new mixed-use zoning district on the 40-acre site of the old package machinery building on Chestnut Street. Adoption of a bylaw by the council is the first step toward any potential project on the site. We, uh, we are re-advertising for the March 19th okay. hearing. There will be two ads, or there are two ads that yes. actually ran today. Okay. Um, one is to introduce mixed-use zoning to the town of East Long Meadow. The other is parcel-specific um, to consider if the zoning amendment is approved by the town development of this particular parcel, and it's been noticed, so it would be 330 uh, Chestnut Street, as a mixed-use zoning okay, district. So those are two separate hearings? Yes. Okay. The town has sought a development project for years at the abandoned factory. This Thursday, March 14th, the East Longwater Youth Safety Committee will hold a special event at the high school on the new look of nicotine addiction, a presentation and community forum to address the alarming number of teens at the middle and high school who are vaping on a regular basis. Vaping uses a small electronic device easily concealed that vaporizes flavored chemical fluids that typically contain far higher concentrations of nicotine than regular cigarettes. The legal age to purchase any nicotine product is 21, so the fact that some students as young as 6th grade are vaping routinely begs the question, how are they getting access to it? While there's no single answer, sales to underage purchasers continue to be part of the problem. In this week's Board of Health update, Town Health Director Amy Petrosky reviews the Board's efforts to ensure tobacco retailers in town are complying with the law. At the February 20th Board of Health meeting, the Board had requested the presence of two local tobacco establishment retailers um, due to some non-compliance identified through local recent inspections. The inspections were conducted through various sources, not our local inspectors. So um, one of the establishments was inspected by the FDA and had a sale to um, an underage youth, so under 18. 
and one of the establishments uh, sold through our local Pioneer Valley Tobacco Control Com um, Committee, which sends out inspectors th through the state. It's a state-funded grant to assess for compliance. And uh, another one of the retailers uh, sold to a miner during those. Uh, the, the board requested their presence to kind of discuss what observations were found during those inspections and to get feedback on what their plans are to correct the violations to the local tobacco regulation. Um, w during one of those conversations, the retailer asked for a public hearing. So in our March meeting, there will be a hearing scheduled where the, the tobacco control uh, organization will send a representative to defend their inspections mm -hmm. and the retailer has an opportunity to uh, rebuke those. So we have passed 21 plus um, last year in 2018 prior to the state passing it. Uh, so but because it's a state or federal inspector they're still at um, 18 so those inspections are done with those criteria in mind. We don't have a say of what the age is even though our local regulation is more strict. So it's even more egregious in, in the board's opinion because these th two retailers are to smoke shops, so they are required to only allow 21 plus to even enter the store as a requirement for their permit. And to be have a, someone under 18 in the store and then also to sell to that person, um, you know, is, the board takes that very seriously. Uh, vaping is a real epidemic for, uh, for youth. Um, there is a percent, I think it's 40 something percentage have no idea that what they're vaping has nicotine in it. Uh, it tastes great, you know, the tobacco retailers are marketing these flavors to youth and there's just a, a, con a misconception out there that the, there aren't dangers. Um, industry is, is starting to be held accountable, but really there's a, a, a need for education of both the youth that are using these products and the parents who also have a misconception about the level of safety. Because there is uh, not real like the evidence that was there when someone had smokes a cigarette, that parents, it's a lot easier for parents to tell. So it's about helping parents identify the signs associated with specifics of vaping as opposed to just tobacco use in general. Um, so this, uh, the, the training that the Youth Safety Committee is putting on is gonna help raise awareness for parents about what some of those signs are of vaping use. Also from the Health Department, Recycling Coordinator Liz Bone stopped by the studio this week to discuss the new mattress recycling program, an upcoming compost demonstration at the library, and more. Hi, I'm Liz Bone, East Long Meadows Recycling Coordinator. I'd like to report about our curbside textile collection that we started in December. In December, we collected 7,747 pounds of textiles, and this January, we collected 5,787 pounds of January. On average, the person throws away about 68 pounds of textiles a year, which accounts for 10% of the municipal stream. These numbers are great for our town. If you haven't received a pink bag in the mail, please call Simple Recycling at 866-835-5068. On March 30th, from 10 to 11.30, I'm holding a composting demonstration at the East Long Meadow Library. I'll show residents how to compost their kitchen scraps and yard waste, and as well, we'll talk about the benefits. Such examples are reducing trash going to our landfills, reducing methane gas in our atmosphere, and enriching your garden soil. We're also selling compost bins as well as the kitchen pails to be picked up at the library. Please call 413-525-5400, extension 1103, to pre-order today. We recently received a grant to start recycling the mattresses that have been brought to the transfer station. The grant pays for a special container and transportation costs. The container is now set up at the transfer station at 160 Summers Road and is accepting mattresses. Mattresses that are not accepted in this program are torn, moldy, twisted, crushed, wet, or infested mattresses. And they also do not accept futons, mattress toppers, water beds, or crib mattresses. Besides now recycling our mattresses, we're taking them out of our waste stream, which will save us money and disposal costs. I'd like to announce a scholarship opportunity for high school seniors for East Long Meadow. The Health Department Waste Reduction Scholarship is for seniors who are interested in waste reduction, recycling, and environmental issues. The scholarship application is due on March 16th, and you can find the application on our Facebook, on Naviance, or our waste reduction webpage. Thanks, and keep recycling.
A.W. Browns is hosting a rabies vaccination clinic for cats and dogs on Saturday, March 16th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Meet East Longmeadow Animal Control Officers, get your pet vaccinated, and renew your dog license. The first 50 rabies vaccines will be paid for by Porter Road Pet Care. Stop by Texas Roadhouse on Tuesday, March 26th from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. for a dine-in night in support of the upcoming Spring Fishing Derby. Be sure to bring a printable flyer from the Lions Club Facebook page to get 10% of your check donated to the Fishing Derby. Professional fisherman Mike Del Visco will be on hand to give away fishing poles and reels to the first 50 kids who attend the dine-in night. The 125th Anniversary Committee's Pasta Dinner Fundraiser was held on Friday at St. Luke's Greek Orthodox Church. Doing events like this for the community, how does that feel? We do we, a lot of them. We do a lot for St. Michael's. Uh, we, we do a lot for the veterans, soldiers on. Uh, we just did Mission 22 in November. So we do a lot of community events. Holy, Holy Cross in Springfield. Uh, Sister Caritas Cancer Center. Okay, so the name is three guys. I only see two guys. Where's the third? Well, the third guy is, is kind of our front guy. He was the guy who was interviewing us before. Richie Fitzgerald is the third guy. Pete, tell us about the cake that you uh, made here for the first kickoff event of the 125th anniversary. Well, we here at Pete Sweets are super excited to be a part of the 125th anniversary. We made a uh, quite a large cake trying to represent all the facets of East Long Meadow, which is very difficult to refine what we're going to put onto the cake. Um, we got a lot of the big organizations, we got some of the school things on there, uh, we have a lot of uh, some of the old homes on one of the layers here, uh, some of the historical sites in East Long Meadow, and it was fun to kind of go around and I picked up a lot of uh, reading material at the East Long Meadow Library and did a lot of reading on East Long Meadow, so I know a lot more than I knew in the past. It was a, a, kind of a throwback to doing a book report is how I felt when I was doing it, but um, it was, a, it was a great experience to be a part of such a big, momentous event. Wow, very nice, very nice. Thank you very much. And here's what's happening at the library this upcoming week. On Thursday, March 14th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. is yoga for middle schoolers. Join Beth Haller for a fun and relaxing yoga session. On Friday, March 15th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. is another edition of Friday Flicks. Drop into the library to watch Instant Family. And also on Friday, March 15th from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. is Art Club. This month, the class will create Mandela turtles, and each student will leave with a finished and unique piece of art. All materials included for grades 3 and up. On Saturday, March 16th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. is a pottery demonstration workshop. This pottery demonstration begins with the basic concept of pressure and motion, and by the end, each person will leave with an unfired piece to take home. That's it for this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm your host, Jen Carlos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.